Bless Roy and a warm good afternoon to everyone. This afternoon, I am going to share the situation report, but I'm also going to share some color and some beauty. Uh, a picture of some flowers I took on Sunday, so I'm going to share some pictures from my collection today. The COVID-19 pandemic has adversely impacted the Federation. However, its beauty remains. St. Kitts and Nevis remains naturally beautiful. That's a lovely picture of the Nevis Peak in the background. Now, in terms of our COVID-19 vaccination program, we rolled out this program 11 months ago. In 11 months, we've achieved the following coverage rates. 82% of the adults in our population have received the first dose, 76.4% of the adults in the population are fully vaccinated. To date, 8.1% of the adults have come forward and accessed the booster shot. In terms of our 12 to 17 year olds, 17.8% have come forward and received the first dose. 15.3% are fully vaccinated. Now, uh, in terms of the booster shot, there is a change that I wanted to bring to your attention. Now, currently, if you have received the second dose of the primary series five months ago, you can easily come into any of the health center, any of the health centers and I request the booster shot. So again, if five months has elapsed between the second dose of the primary series and the present, you can come in and ask for the booster shot. 55% of our total population is now fully vaccinated. And so we still have work to do. We still have 45% of the population to bring on board in terms of being fully vaccinated. This slide shows uh, the data disaggregated by island. So as you can see, 67.1% of the adults in Nevis are fully vaccinated and 13% of the 12 to 17 year olds are fully vaccinated as compared to 16.1% of the teenagers in St. Kitts and 80% of the adults in St. Kitts. Now, uh, this slide uh, shows or highlights the fact that we continue the trend of recoveries. Uh, many of the cases diagnosed with COVID are recovering and we are happy that this trend continues. Between January 18 to January the 25th, we've had 936 persons recovering. And in this same time period, we've only added 305 uh, newly diagnosed cases. And so uh, the number of persons recovering far outstrips the number of uh, newly diagnosed. Now this slide shows the fourth wave we can say that this wave started around about Christmas Eve to present. And I, what I, this, this graph is showing that we peaked round about the 4th to the 12th of January. And uh, the numbers are going down. In terms of the recoveries, the line in red shows that we peaked round about the 20th of January. I think we had over 300 persons recovering uh, on the 20th of January. So we are doing quite a good job in terms of containing this fourth wave of COVID-19 infections. Uh, in this time period, we've added 2,509 cases and a total of 1,973 persons have recovered fully. Now, in terms of active cases, we are monitoring 553 uh, such cases or case managers. We want to commend them for the work they are doing. They are monitoring the cases uh, around the clock. 
And uh, within the three days, we've had five COVID-19 related deaths. So between Sunday to Tuesday of this week, we've had five uh, persons dying uh, of COVID-19. Now, these individuals are elderly. They were older adults with underlying chronic conditions, and they were all unvaccinated. Now, this picture shows the waves beating uh, on our black rocks, and it also highlights the four waves that we've been experiencing. The first wave in 2020, we added 45 cases. The second wave between May to July 2021, we added 499 cases to our COVID-19 tally. In the third wave, we added 2,098 cases. In this wave, the fourth wave, so far we've added 2,509 cases. Again, I wanted to just, uh, you know, underscore that, you know, these relate five deaths that we've had. One uh, documented in Nevis, four Sen kids, they were all unvaccinated. They were all older adults between the age of 68 to 92 years. They all had underlying chronic medical conditions. This slide provides us a snapshot uh, as to the current COVID-19 situation. To date, we've recorded 5,331 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with 792 in Nevis, 4,536 send kits. Again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the trend continues whereby the patients are recovering nicely. To date, we've had 4,745 persons recovering. We are now monitoring 553 active cases with 98 on the island of Nevis, 455 on the island of St. Kitts. Uh, to date, We've only recorded 33 COVID-19 related deaths, six for Nevis and a total of 27 for St. Kitts. I want to bring to your attention just some additional information uh, with respect to the 33 COVID-19 related deaths. Uh, in terms of gender breakdown, uh, two thirds of the cases were male and one third female. And this is in keeping with the global international trend whereby the males tend to die more so of COVID-19 versus females. The scientists, they are looking into this as to you know, what are the factors. Uh, it's, kind, it's somewhat complicated and we are still uh, awaiting the, this information. They are trying to unpack the reason why males tend to die more so from COVID versus females. Uh, 29 or 88 uh, percent of the deaths were unvaccinated uh, and they, the deaths, they were mainly older adults between the ages of 40 to 60 plus. So again, uh, gender, your vaccination status, age, and the presence of underlying chronic conditions uh, place you at risk for severe COVID, hospitalization, and even death. And so we want to uh, reach out to those individuals who are unvaccinated, those, especially the older adults with uh, underlying chronic conditions, we, we are you know, pleading with you to come on board and give yourself that additional layer of protection against severe disease from COVID even, and even hospitalization. The Omicron variant is the predominant variant in circulation. The Lambda variant was in circulation between May to December of last year. The Omicron variant uh, is causing a more milder form of disease. However, I want us not to become nonchalant and take it for granted because in three days we've had five deaths. And so it is still significant 
and we want persons to adhere to the COVID-19 prevention and control measures. And we want those who are unvaccinated to come on board in terms of uh, receiving or consenting to the vaccine. Could you go back one slide? A very important slide. It shows Dr. Rafael Rosales, our national epidemiologist, and Ms. Akila Moore, the statistician within the Ministry of Health. I want to pause and thank them both for their hard work and for their contribution uh, to the weekly presentations in terms of the situation report. And so thank you, Dr. Rafael Rosales and Ms. Akila Moore. This is a picture taken this morning as we were uh, uh, working on this presentation. Now, in terms of the COVID-19 vaccines, persons are saying, hey, why do I need to take the vaccine? Because persons who are vaccinated are still experiencing breakthrough infections. But what's the real deal? The vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine, still provides you a level of protection against COVID-19 infections. There are persons who have been exposed to Omicron and they didn't pick it up because they've been fully vaccinated, they've gotten their primary series, and more so those who got their booster shots. No, they didn't pick it up, or if they did, very uh, no symptoms whatsoever. So the vaccines provides a layer of protection against COVID-19 infections. It also reduces the risk of severe illness and death amongst persons who are fully vaccinated. The literature suggests and recommends that the vaccine effectiveness against hospitalizations has remained relatively high over time. Now, in terms of some recent information coming out of CDC, uh, the research uh, show uh, that children who have recovered from COVID-19 appear to be at significantly increased risk of developing type 1 or type 2 diabetes. And this is information, new information coming out of CDC. So they looked at two uh, cohorts of children, and in one cohort, they found a 2.6-fold increase in risk in developing diabetes post-COVID, and in the other cohort, a smaller 30% increase in risk in developing diabetes post-COVID. And these are children under the age of 18. Now, this bit of information provides additional reasons and underscores the importance of uh, providing consent for children who are eligible for vaccination to be vaccinated. The studies also show that there is a heightened risk of developing diabetes in adults who have recovered from COVID. So in other words, uh, in short, uh, in summary, uh, the diagnosis of COVID-19 in adults seems to give you or provide or add an additional risk of your developing diabetes and also in children. So this is one additional reason for individuals to come on board in terms of uh, saying yes to the vaccine that provides you a layer of protection against uh, this disease. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all remember the protective measures that have kept us over this past two years, uh, the vaccination, the wearing of the face mask when in public places, maintaining adequate hand hygiene, and appropriate distance between ourselves and others when in public. And each week I, I keep repeating, if you are experiencing any of the COVID-like symptoms, we want you to remain at home and not expose others to the virus. Between the 1st of January to present, the last slide, 
we've been enjoying some beautiful sunsets here in St. Kitts San Nevis. And I'm sharing with you a picture of the sunset taken uh, on Sunday evening, January the 23rd. Thank you.